This talk is about carotid angioplasty and stenting and what is the current status of it today. So the North American symptomatic carotid endarthrotomy trial conclusively shows us that endarthrotomy is superior to medical management in a patient who has a stenosis of more than 70%. The ACAS study which is about asymptomatic carotid arteries goes a step further and shows that this result could also be extended to a patient who's got a stenosis of greater than 60% when he's asymptomatic and uh, thus we have evidence to say that these procedures are under the current American Heart Association guidelines. Uh, the recommendations are if a patient is asymptomatic then uh, a stenosis of more than 60% is an indication for endarthrectomy and if the patient is symptomatic then it falls to 50%. So what are the problems? We find that when the patient has got an associated comorbid condition or the patient needs a CABG very soon after endarctrectomy, these patients carry a high risk of stroke. Another group is a patient who's got an ipsilateral occlusion. The other is a patient who have a lesion high in the internal carotid artery or a patient after a neck surgery or after radiotherapy then a short neck in an obese person can also be difficult uh, for to be treated. Thus for those patients who are uh, poor candidates for endarctrectomy, we need an alternative. These are studies to show that carotid angioplasty and stenting could be the alternative by the numbers that have been done worldwide and to show the low complication rates that come from most centers. This is a little analysis of some studies all over the world. Uh, there are, uh, this review takes into account about 11,000 patients, 6,688 did not have a protection device, stroke was seen in 5.29 of them, in uh, 4,005 there was a protection device used, stroke rate was 2.2, sounds impressive. But if you take only major strokes, you find the statistics is not that significant. Having said that, one should understand that with all means try to avoid a stroke and I still think a filter is a good idea. For example, look at this focal stenosis. Looks pretty straightforward. Post angioplasty and stenting, the filter is full of debris and this patient would have had a stroke. Thus, it is a safer option even today, statistics or not, not statistics, to ensure that we use a filter. Now these are some studies to show that today at three years we have got enough literature to convincingly show that there, that endarctomy is nowhere superior to angioplasty and stenting or in other words, nowhere inferior also to angioplasty and stenting. But what are the limitations of this procedure? The limitation one, if you do not have a femoral axis, it's a relative indi contraindication. If you have an unfavorable outic arch anatomy, again it's a relative contraindication, depends on the experience of the operator. Severely tortuous vessels, severely calcific vessels. Now if you have a loose thrombus or a laminar thrombus in the site of the stenosis, these are absolute contraindication. Uh, if you have uh, a stenosis of greater than 2 centimeters can be considered a relative contraindication and of course lesions like having an aneurysm may be better treated with stent graft and contrast related problems and of course a patient who has got severe aortic stenosis also falls into a group of patients who should not be treated. This patient has an infrarenal aortic occlusion. We do an angiogram from the arm and we make a diagnosis of a critical stenosis. The stenosis is treated by stenting, so technically one can treat it from the arm. This patient has got a thrombus at the site of stenosis which is mobile and this is a definite contraindication to try an angioplasty and stenting. You can dislodge the thrombus and the patient can have a major stroke. Now how do we do the procedure? We take a diagnostic catheter, take a wire into the external carotid artery, take the catheter out and replace it with a guiding catheter. Now we can start the procedure. 
Now for example in this patient with the stenosis, what would you do? You would pass a wire through the guiding catheter. At times you predilate the lesion if the stenosis is critical. Replace that with a stent and deploy the stent. Now the residual stenosis is not significant, the procedure stops at this point and you come off. But often this is not. Now for example here are cases we just treated without a protection device by placing a stent across. This is a case of bilateral stenosis. Treated successfully by stenting. And another patient of bilateral stenosis treated successfully by stenting. Here's a patient with an occlusion of the carotid on one side. Again treated successfully by angioplasty and stenting. And a patient who had just one vessel that was the right carotid. You can see the collateral su supply into the opposite carotid territory and the vertebral territory treated successfully by stenting. Tandem lesions which are contraindication for surgery can also be treated by stenting. But the problem is to we use a filter or not. We talked about the following steps. So we deploy the stent. There is a significant residual stenosis. We take an appropriate size balloon, dilate the stent, deflate and come off. At this point microemboli can go up into the brain. How do you prevent that? Use a filter. The filter captures the emboli as it go into the brain. Now, at the end of the procedure, all we have to do is to capture it and pull it out. Logically, this should make the procedure safer and trials in the Sapphire trial have shown that it makes it safer. For example, here is a patient with a lesion which is about 2 cm long and is the end result after angioplasty stenting with a protection Another example, very similar situation. Now the types of stents that are available are the classical nitinol stents and the wall stent. The wall stent is not much in vogue anymore because when you place it, it straightens the vessel and you have an accordion effect at the base of the skull which is not very pleasant. But on the other hand, in a tortuous vessel like this, when you place the, a stent across, it maintains the curve, dilates it and you have a result which is definitely acceptable. In conclusion, we have to accept that carotid endarctotomy was once considered the only procedure and a procedure of choice. Today, thanks to interventional radiology, carotid artery stenting is a reality and can be practiced with confidence.